Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Bolton, the analysis days. So, what a weird season, firstly. Just what a weird-ass season. We've been a little bit all over the place, uh, I'll admit, of course. Um, but I do think we're on the right track, potentially, just with this one change. I've obviously still got other ideas, but I, I genuinely believe when I saw that, I was like, of course that's the reason we're surrendering so much of the ball in these matches and playing balls into weird positions instead of just playing some nice intricate stuff. Some of our best play comes with that intricate stuff behind, like just in front of their back four, where we play these little balls around and just fashion spaces. And yeah, obviously you still get that with pass into space, but it feels like we're getting more of that type of stuff now. And I'm definitely pleased with the way things are looking and willing to continue with this for now because I actually do think there's something there. So we're just going to go through the squad, of course. Ogushan Demaran, I mean, like, obviously, it, it's going to be hard to analyse this because it's been such a topsy-turvy season for me. Um, but what I'm mainly just looking at to see if there's any excellent performance, any bad performance, etc. I'm still happy with him. I think he's one of the best players in the squad. I can't believe we got him, to be honest. Like, legitimately, I cannot believe he's our player. He has a 90-odd million pound release clause, which is just one of those things, unfortunately. So even if we were to one day lose him, it would be for an absurd amount of money. Not that that's important right now, because, of course, we don't need the cash, particularly. But I do think next year could be a breakout season for him. I really do think he's extremely good. Uh, next up, we've got O, of course, who is still improving, slowly but surely. But I do think there's a limit to what he can do, potentially. And maybe that's a position where... I, I Actually, no. I think he's a very good player but I wouldn't be opposed to strengthening in that part of the team as well because some of his physicals just sort of not really developing as much as I was hoping, quite frankly. But he is still a good player, though. I do like my man O. Guy Porteous, I mean, he's barely played this season and I have got him transfer listed, so I do expect to potentially see him uh, go this summer, maybe, because I just don't think that there's going to be space for him to play for us next season. Great. Look at that 20 technique. That's insane. That must have gone up. It can't have always been 20 technique. But we will have to see about Guy Portis. He's been here for a long, long time. I think he was with us in League 2 in the end. So fair play, Guy. Uh, Kiros has obviously only had half a season. Hasn't done a lot just yet. But I want to see what he can do long term. He was just like a sign that we could make. I'm still thinking that there's a lot about this guy that I really, really do like. And I'm curious to see. Particularly as he can play both of our midfield roles. Which is very, very important in this tactic. Regan Booty still managed to make 12 Premier League appearances for us this year. But you can see that he's not gonna be able to really play for us much more he's one shy of 250 league games for bolton though so you can bet your ass he's definitely gonna get that for sure luca brace i mean he was mainly brought in as a backup anyway but i do think we need to have a discussion about where he, i mean maybe he could honestly do the job it's just the, the marking the, the marking is particularly the, the issue here potentially but i'm still interested in what this guy could potentially do given a run of games in the team where we've had um candela this entire time because candela's done some cool stuff Speaking of Candela, uh, it's a question of whether I try to extend his loan again. I just really don't know about my man Juan. It, it's always a tough one with players like him because he has got a goal and five assists this year, despite the poor average rating. But I just wonder how he would do in a full... But I've been saying this every year. You just don't know. Colombo, he's had a full season here now. Uh, two goals, three assists from his two XG. I I'm pleased with what Colombo's offered us. I like him in the centre, to be honest. I think he's done a good job playing as that kind of Metzala bombing up and down that position because he does have such great great energy in that area. So curious about him. Very curious. Victor Conroy, of course, haven't seen a great deal from him just yet because obviously he is only 18. And I still think that, I mean, look at the passing and vision. If we could start getting him into the team and actually starting to develop him, there might well be something there. Physical's still a little bit eh, though. Critchlow Noble, oh, what a sad, sad time it is. Only two substitute appearances this year for Ramoni. He's a good lad. I mean, unless I can find someone to replace Lacazette Roche, he may end up finding himself playing some more games, although maybe not. I do think that we've got Depestra and Garthes ready to jump into that role, but I want to see if I can maybe sign a first-teamer as well. Speaking of, it's Johnny Depestra. Uh, didn't play as much this year, but he has developed. At, at least he's showing signs of developing. That, that's the main thing with my man Johnny. Uh, I think he is a very good player. There's just... The lack of jumping reach and height is obviously going to cut cost him in places, but he does offer us some slightly different stuff that maybe could be functional for us. Akifameo, despite getting that new contract that I gave him, which did actually cost us a fair amount, he only played 11 Premier League games this year, and you can see that he's not at the level of some of our other players. Manny Farmer, now I know there was a lot of derision about him, and I still agree with you, uh, but I, I cannot stress this enough. I was trying to prove the point about the expensiveness of English players. Uh, I can't have it both ways. We can either sign English players, or we can complain about how expensive English players are, uh, <laughs> quite simply. So yes, he's expensive. I still think, though, that he's going to offer something long-term in that role, and I saw, uh, I've seen a lot from him in those last few matches that make me think that there's definitely something there for him. I'm a bit concerned about that, though, <laughs> to see about it. But that's why I'm just going to go for quality and, um, like, value for money in future transfer windows so we can avoid situations like that, quite frankly, because uh, it ain't just worth it. Uh, Garth says, of course, you know, he's only just joined us uh, in, the su in, like, what was it? In January, I think it was. So haven't seen a lot from him yet. Curious to see what he can do. He does have decent speed. 
overall for a six foot four lad. So maybe his, his heading is an issue though. I'm going to get him on training right now, actually. So we'll get him on his aerials. Ryan Giles hasn't really featured this year. Uh, well, one substitute appearance. So yeah, make of that what you will. Do you have a new contract? Yeah, no. Nikola Illich, an interesting one is my man Illich. I think that the defensive, the deep line playmaker role on FM21 does seem just a bit iffy in general, but we will see. It might be him. It might be the role. There's all sorts of factors it could be. Maybe he'll change with this new setup. I don't know. We'll see. Veselin Ivanov, eight goals, five assists. I, he's met my expectations, particularly his, he's mostly been forced to play out on the right-hand side so far this season. So it doesn't concern me too greatly. I mean, the fact is he's still met his marks on a lot of those areas, and that's kind of key. Kang, though, who I've already extended his loan for another season, has been extraordinary this year. Nine goals and 12 assists this season. I mean, look at the step up. He cont And in less games, too. He contributed six goals last year. This year, he contributed 21 goals overall and seven player of the match boards. I think it's actually the highest in the Premier League. The guy's legitimately done a superb job this season. And Kim as well. You know, he hasn't had the opportunities so much this year. So I'm glad that he's still been able to take the opportunities. He's still scored 11 goals, four assists from an XG of nine. Yeah, it's down on last season, but his average rating is actually higher, interestingly. And he has played a lot less matches as a result of, you know, him disappearing. So I mentioned it might be military service. I really don't know if the game actually models that or not, because all it said was international duty. So maybe that was the case. I really just don't know. But I don't think we're going to have the same issues next year with half of our squad disappearing in that period of time um certainly not for the foreseeable future so i'm actually still pretty pleased uh with what he's offered us this season more assists as well and a better average rating overall so maybe he would have created enough chances to get a similar goal tally if he'd played that extra nine games i don't know we'll have to see i'm still pleased with kim though and he's still definitely got to be our starting striker sign a new contract in the summer so i do find it hilarious that he now wants to move to another club hey if they pay 116 million pounds you're welcome to leave my man johan he's such a strange one like, I like him a lot. I just think that he's a... He doesn't have the... I mean, he's not super slow. And we have had him working on his quickness. So, I still really like him. And he's very easy. You've got to love it. Morton Croken, three assists as well. Bear in mind, he's only started two Premier League games and yet has a very similar record to Illich. That's going to be something that we need to look at, I think, when it comes to the analysis in a minute. And, of course, Wendy, who has played over 100 games for us and is going to be joining Real Sociedad, which is such a shame because I really do like Wendy. And I was hoping that we'd be able to get him permanently... And yeah, the fact that he's chose that and we had nothing we could do about it. The only thing we could have done would be to offer to buy him from Chelsea in January. The problem is AI teams seem to have no concept of the fact that the player's contract is expiring and will still demand basically full price for a player. And that would have been upwards of 40, 50 million because of this stupid way that the uh, value works. Now that it's down to 4 million, of course, now, but at the time it was a lot higher and foreign clubs can put in contract deals from you before you can we still wouldn't be able to put a contract in i don't think i think we'd have to wait till the first of june oh no maybe now we could have done but it wouldn't matter so that's a shame losing wendy um we're gonna have to look for a new center back next summer this summer i mean he had to play through the middle in times of incredible need and he might well be leaving us in this summer anyway he wants to commit his future to the club but it's whether i want him to or not mansour mohammed really pleased uh with his performances for us for the most part this year like couple of goals from us looks solid at the back i like that pairing of demaran mohammed and lacazette roche ironically who surprisingly is actually turning out worse these guys could step into that role maybe lacazette roche isn't as good as i thought but he, he kind of is isn't he so he's doing well for his country as well i like him alex mccannia i'll always be a bit confused about goalkeepers on this game they do the weirdest things I, like i don't think there's any question that mccannia is an excellent goalkeeper i do just find goalkeepers do strange things like just regularly do the most obnoxious things um and you just kind of have to accept it i think <laughs> considering he is actually putting up good numbers and we're back to demo so let's go check out team stats and th i think this will be quite revealing so average possession we're right down towards the bottom uh, and i believe though had we been playing our new kind of approach, we'd have been much more like up here um, during this same period. And I definitely think that's part of the reason that we've struggled is just unable to keep the ball, quite frankly. Headers one. Yeah, struggling on that one too. Headers one ratio is at least better. That's good. We're at least winning the headers we get the chance to. Not committing too many yellow cards, which is good. Obviously, we have had two red cards um, because things. PPG, 1.55 is pretty solid for me. But Form is irrelevant. Let's go and have a look at goals. So goals scored with the eighth highest at 53 goals. City obviously miles above everyone else. Um, goals per game isn't that important because you could just work that out. It's expected goals for. So we're 12th on expected goals for. So we have outperformed our, our XG this season. It's undeniable. Um, so that's what I mean about how I felt like we were getting results in games that there was just nothing on the line. Nothing, just nothing there for us. And yes, you could say that that's a, a bold strategy and it could work, but I don't think long-term it does. I feel like the, the changes I've made 
it feels like we're much more in line with where we should be. Obviously, the Norwich game is a bit of an outlier in that. But for the most part, we're playing well now and looking better. I don't have the exact stats to hand. If I, or do I? Or I do, in fact. So before, uh, against us, let me just check, actually. So, yeah. So before, we were conceding an average of 1.42 expected goals per game. Now it's actually 1.498. But what I would say is that is against a much higher caliber of opposition, potentially, because we had Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs, and Man City in those matches. So make of that what you will. Still important to remember, to remember, but nevertheless, take that into account. So that's actually gone up a tiny little bit. But I think the main difference is before, it was 1.17 XG per game, and now it's 1.50. And that is a huge step up in as far as what we're expected to do on the attacking side of things. So that, for me, is a big deal. And yeah, I feel like we're definitely moving in the right direction. Penalties taken. 11 penalties for Chelsea. And we only won two penalties this year. And we only scored one of them. Um, so that's saying something. Cross completion, where it should be. What I like to see. That, not so much. But goals from corners, seven. Much, much more like it. That, that's much more. We didn't score a single one last year. And that's where we should be. Up there. Uh, direct free kicks. Didn't score any. That's a bit sad. Indirect free kicks. Six. Much more like it. Big fan of that. Uh, pass completion. Yeah, that needs to be better. But I think we'll get there as well. Passes completed. We're always down the bottom with that one. Hopefully that will help. T clear cut chances created. I mean, that's an irrelevant stat nowadays. Uh, shots four. Down in 12th. Shots on target. 13th. Shots on target ratio. One of the lowest, actually, in the league. And that's something we definitely do need to be looking at. And that might have been one of the other issues. Just bad shots. Conversion rate. Very good, though. Fourth best conversion rate. It shows that when we're getting the chances, we are actually taking them, but missing the target a bit too much as well. Shots per game as well, like down in 12th. I feel like our attacking output for most of the season doesn't match up with where we finished. Our attacking output for the last part of the season, the last six games, kind of does. And that's all I really want is to bring us in line a little bit. Dribbles per game, it's, it's sort of fine. What about defensively? This is another area as well I'm kind of interested. So we actually have the fourth best defense in the league at 42 goals conceded. Expected XG... I mean, look at that. It's the sixth worst. 50. I mean, that, this is what I mean. I feel like we've overperformed this year. And I'm hoping that all I can do is bring it into line, quite frankly. You can see different corners. Still one of the worst at six. Um, still pulling my hair out as to what to do about that. Defensive. I mean, none from them, which is a good sign. Indirect free kicks, again, we just cannot seem to defend them. Um, that's always been the case. Corners is just, it kind of comes and goes. This one has always been down here. Clean sheets. 12. It's not bad, to be honest. Fouls made. We make a fair few of fouls, but not too many. It's fine. Tackles one. Eh, kind of iffy. Um, tackles one ratio. This is what I mean. I just don't think we've been as good as perhaps we looked in that first part of the season. Look at the number of blocks, though. That's a good sign. We're making a lot of blocks. And that's because of the way that we've got the teams defend. We, we're defending behind the ball. And obviously, you're defending behind the ball. But, like, we're getting teams into shooting positions. But they're not dangerous shots because we're able to block them fairly easily. It's what I noticed as well. Possession lost, not as many as other teams, which is a good sign. Clearances, uh, not bad, not bad at all. Interceptions, eh, eighth. Shots against, we faced a decent amount of shots as well, which is why McCann has probably done so well, to be honest. He made that incredible game against Leeds, I think it was, which apparently equaled the record for most saves in a Premier League game. Um, shots on target against, that's interesting. And this is kind of more what I'm talking about. We haven't conceded that many shots on target against us. And I think that comes down to the fact that, again, where we're allowing our opponents to shoot from is causing them to miss the target regularly. So maybe that's a sign of more in the, oh, okay, things aren't so bad kind of column. Um, amazingly, we've not been selling out our stadium every game, which is crazy. How many? Wow. We had no stadium sellouts. That's really weird. We're in the Premier League and not a single sellout. What? That literally doesn't even make sense to me. Particularly as the new stadium is not to do with this. So that's a completely separate thing. Really weird that we're in the Premier League with no stadium sellouts, considering we're Bolton. But okay. Highest attendance was 28,000. What is our attendance capacity? That's really strange. Lowest attendance was 25,000. Uh, net transfer spend. We're actually quite high up on that one with 65 million uh, as a result of that. But look at the salary per annum. Still the second least, considering where we are, which is always what I want to aim for. So I'm still pretty pleased with it, but I definitely feel that there's work to be done. On the player side of things, I mean, yellow card, sorry, for we got a red. Someone else of us got a red too, we can't see it. Yellow cards, I think Manny Farmer, yeah, he's got 10. So he did get a two-match ban at one point, which wasn't ideal, but what can you do? Uh, Kang managed seven Man of the Match awards this season, which is outrageously good. Like, I've got to give him mad credit for his performance-wise, just getting those. That's outrageously good. Uh, distance covered. Anyone on there at all? Luca Brace. That's interesting. So he certainly gets about a bit when he's on the pitch. Average rating, even, look at that. Kang's in there, Lacazette Roche is in there. We actually have players in the right positions. Headers one, Demaran with the most headers one in the entire league. Lacazette Roche in there too. Notably Mohamed missing on that one, frustratingly. Uh, possession one, Manny Farmer. That's a good sign. I want to see how... Ah, so you could see 
right okay this for me is a big sign of, right you remember last season i said regan booty lost possession more than anyone else in the league by about 200 people like by about 200 times this season why is palace's goalkeeper lost possession so much um Yes, he's still the highest, but then it's a unique role where there's going to be an amount of possession loss that is going to be higher than everybody else. But look at the difference between him and Regan Booty last year. He's in line with other players in the league, whereas Regan Booty was about too high. He lost the ball about 600, nearly 700 times last season, I think. Manny Farmer has been a lot better in many ways. Uh, Attacking-wise, like, yeah, we're not spectacular on that one. Kim's down here in joint 16th place. This has to be expected. He missed so many games. Uh, expected goals. Kim, again, 19th overall. So we've still done all right in there. <laughs> Average minutes per goal. Kim, again, 19th. Not that surprising. Shots, again, he'll probably be not on there at all, which actually should aid his conversion ratio, potentially. And again, not even on the shots on target, too. Percentage-wise, Colombo, 56, is good. I like to see it. Uh, Kang with 25% conversion rate. Getting Kang into good scoring positions really does seem to be like the king of opportunities for us here. Shots per 90 minutes, nobody on there at all. Free kick goals, three for Bruno Fernandes is outstanding. Uh, appearances is totally irrelevant. Assist per 90 minutes, Kang again on there, but O is on there as well. That position does seem like a really good creative role for us. Uh, key passes, Kang again, 102. He's been superb. He's been the man this season. Again, he's on there uh, with 420. Love the old job. Blaze it, y'all. Uh, click out chances created. That's useless, unfortunately, now. Uh, passes attempted is kind of irrelevant. Pass completion usually is just goalkeepers for the most part. And occasionally, oh, no, there's a few non-goalkeepers in there, to be fair. Crosses attempted. Doesn't matter about that. Cross completion. Uh, unfortunately, it, this stack is so skewed because of the amount of crosses it requires you to actually put in uh dribbles for like wow, matt west he was the guy that scored that absolute banger against us earlier this year in that one nil defeat to sheffield united what's his dribbling stat yeah uh oh he's a left winger god damn it matt couldn't you be a right winger i would have been tempted to sign you then my friend uh tackles one wow james justin's at bristol city now manny farmer look at that 124 i don't know if freaking booty was on here or not but illich as well doing a solid job tackles one ratio oh again nicely to see him in there tackles per 90 minutes manny farmer again nice and high uh but i suppose he will be high on that one mistakes into goals no players on it for us which is a good sign uh key tackles just the one for callum slattery why don't they fix this like i realized that apparently it's a key tackle counts as a tackle that denies a goal that is over a certain amount of xg but then they've obviously set the xg value for that so high that nobody ever actually makes those tackles so this stat is completely worthless for me uh but there you go demoran and lacazette roche as well with key headers and again, Mohamed's really struggled on the key headers side of things. And that's why I'm a bit concerned about next season without Lacazette Roche. Uh, but we will have to see. We'll find someone else. Interceptions made. 83 for Manny Farmer. 144 blocks for Manny Farmer as well. It's good signs. Demran as well. Superb. Ah, there's Mansur Mohamed. So he's been on the clearances, which I suppose is something. Shots blocked. Um, it's interesting that, I suppose, yeah, th these guys are much more likely to make the shot blocks, I suppose, than general blockage. Uh, conceded. Chakir, actually, with the least which is weird. I guess because City might have had more than one goalkeeper involved. It's the only thing I can imagine that's caused that. 19 clean sheets there for David De Gea as well. Um, what else we got? David Reyes saves held 123 for Crystal Palace. Uh, most of them were probably because, him lost, because of him losing the ball, I would imagine. Right. Okay. Uh, let's just go do some player analysis. This will be enlightening. So left-hand side of our defense, I mean, it's really difficult to even do a comparison here because it's really just Regan Booty that we're comparing him to. And even then, I think Booty's come on a sub. Hang on, where's Booty actually played when he's come in? No, no, he's played 14 times at left-back when he's come in. So that's fine. We can do a fair comparison here. So firstly, Farmer, interceptions, double that of Regan Booty. Tackles one slightly worse, and he does win slightly less tackles, which is fair enough. But we can see less goals, which is key. Uh, headers one per nine minutes is dead the same. The assist-wise, that makes sense because Booty would have taken some set pieces when he was in the team. And his cross-completion is definitely higher, for sure. Uh, key passes per 90 minutes. Obviously, Rigan Booty is a key pass machine. Uh, dribbles, though. Manny Farmer's definitely got him on that one. We do score a bit... Well, in fact, we score a lot more when Manny Farmer's in the team. And he's got some assists as well. Um, PPG's higher than Rigan Booty. So, Booty does offer stuff, of course. But I feel like Manny Farmer, you can see, clearly wins hands down for most of those areas. I feel like a lot of these stats that Rigan Booty's got here have come from him taking set pieces when he is in the team. And he, you know, obviously we can't put Booty in over Manny Farmer at this point, but I think that we do need more options in this role because Booty is not going to be a good enough backup for me next year. And I do want to find another young left back or left wing back rather to fulfill that position. But I'm still overall happy with his first season at the club. Still think he's got more to offer us. As for the right hand side, I mean, we're really comparing Luca Brace and Juan Candela. But again, I think Luca Brace may have played a few games. I oh, know, mostly wing back right still. I did play him in a few times through the middle off the bench. So. 
Luca Brace does make more interceptions. Tackles one slightly worse, though, and we do concede more with him in the team. He does win more headers per 90 minutes, but his assist record is worse, uh, comfortably worse, in fact. Cross completion is about the same, but that's not really the point of that role. Does play a few more key passes, dribbles a bit less. We score more with him in the team, and the PPG is slightly lower. Uh, is obviously his XG is lower because he's played less times. I wish there was an XG per 90 uh, that you could find, but for the most part, I just, I really don't know about that role anymore. Like, I feel like one of these days, maybe we'll find someone who's perfect for that role. And I just don't know if we've actually got that person yet. So that might be a, a key area where once again, we need to look in this summer and see what we can dig up. Worst case scenario, I just extend the loan of Juan Candela for yet another season. But part of me wants someone that's ours. And I don't believe Luca Brace is that man. Centre-backs. This is a fascinating one. So where is Lacazette Roche? Is he not at club or is he unavailable? There he is. Right, okay. So... Demaran, Lacazette, Roche, and Mohamed have played the most. For Mayrose played a bit. Depeche has played a bit. Be interested to see which of these two did better when they did play anyway. So uh, let's just sort by interceptions firstly. Uh, so Lacazette, Roche, clearly the highest. In fact, much, much higher than Demaran. Very, very high, in fact, comparison to Demaran. And Mohamed's definitely in there too, which is a nice sign. Uh, tackles one ratio. Demaran at 80, 80. Mohamed down at 71. That's actually quite poor, surprisingly. How what is his tackling? 17. Uh, Mansour? We need to talk, son. That's that's really poor considering your tackling stat. But there you go. At least tackles per 90 minutes is relatively in line with the others. In fact, it's higher than both of them. So Demaran makes less... That's weird. Man somehow it makes a lot more... Maybe that's just because he makes more tackles. Like, he's bound to miss more because he goes for more of them. Uh, team conceded per 90 minutes is going to be a fascinating one. is actually the lowest, albeit... He has started eight times, though. That's really interesting. Demaran at 08. So... That does give me the, the theory that perhaps Depestra could be... The, I mean, his tackles one ratio is very solid as well at 86 over that same period. Um, like, we concede less goals with him in the team. Demaran and Mohamed in there too. Lacazette Roche is the worst of the bunch. What about headers one per 90 minutes? Demaran's definitely the highest. Lacazette Roche, Mohamed. Depestra's not that far off though. Like, he does lack a bit of height as we know. But he's not like noticeably... I mean, he's a little bit worse, but he's not as bad as I thought. I thought it would be in the ones, to be honest. Uh, this stuff is basically useless. Team goals for 90 minutes. Still kind of useful, though. Mohamed, Depestra again at 1.5. And again, Lacazette Roche comes out bottom of this one, too. What about PPG? Depestra at 1.9. And I know, but it's eight starts and three... It's not like it's two starts. That's, that's nearly 900 minutes of football he's played. Uh, I don't know what competitions might be an issue there, too. But Mohamed at the best there in 1.68. Demran at 1.56. And again, Lacazette Roche coming out bottom. I'm not opposed to the idea of Depestra, Mohamed, and Demaran for next season, to be honest. Now I'm looking at this. Um, like I said, Roche definitely stands out on a lot of, like, big-name stats. But as far as things that matter, like how many goals we can see with him in the team, how many goals we score with him in the team, and our overall PPG when he's in the team is actually lower. Uh, but despite the fact that he does score goals, I mean, Man's got seven goals for us this season. He's definitely a goal threat. Like, look at his XG compared to the others. It is extraordinarily high. Um, he's basically scored exactly double what he would have expected for it. In fact, they all have, to be fair. Demaran has basically hit double as well. So is Mohamed. So, pretty pleased with that, quite frankly. I feel like Fameo maybe could have nicked himself a goal in there at some point too. I'm less worried about what we'd be like without Wendy. I do still want to look for a first-choice centre-back, but if we have to start playing Johnny DePestra again... I'm not actually fussed about that, putting him on side with Demaran and Mohamed. Now, maybe over the course of a full season, we'd get worse attributes out of that, worse stats. But with those two, those three, plus Juan Felipe Garces as a backup, it's not the end of the world. But I would like to sign someone else just to make sure that we've got cover anyway. So I'm still going to look for a centre-back. Because I think they're quite easy to find centre-backs because there's a lot of them in the game. And they're not very specialist as far as roles goes. So I think I might be able to find a good one anyway. Okay, so central midfielders. Really, we're looking at Colombo... Illich, uh, Kroken, Kirosh, Conroy, these types of players. Um, so this will be fascinating. Interceptions is more of them. I mean, actually, look at that. More than Kroken. 1.98. Uh, 8.9. He does seem to offer us a defensive stability. What is his tackling like? Has he got good tackling as well? 12. It's, his positioning is good too. He's got some good mentals that might really help with that. And I do wonder if that's why he's performed better, potentially, than someone like Illich in that same position. When you look at the... like, He stands head and shoulders above everyone else that plays in that centre. They're all down here, and he's right up here. Tackles one. Conroy does like a tackle. Maybe the uh, the lack of that might be helpful. How's Kroken on that one? So he's a bit worse, though, than Illich, interestingly. What about tackles one per game? Booty obviously doesn't count on this one. Illich go, 3.71. Not bad. Kroken, well down. So Illich, hmm. Kroken's better at just sort of reading the game and picking those balls out, whereas Illich is better at just winning it when the other team have got it, it would seem. Right, this is going to be the key for us, though. Illich, look at that. 0.79 when he starts. I mean, that is telling when you look at Kroken, which is more than double. Double! 
Um, so clearly for me, wow, that's really, really high on Nikola Ilic. An average of 0.79 goals conceded when he's in the team. That's astonishing. Um, he might not get the plaudits as far as his ratings go, but that is a stunning stat when you look at how much he's actually played. 37 times this season. Uh, headers one. Luca Bray. Morton Krogan, again, is better in the air for sure. Uh, what about assists? This is going to be an interesting one. So, Krogan definitely performs better. Ah, oh, that's the thing. Illich is a really good defensive player in there, but he, he does struggle to get us, like, forward momentum a lot of the time in games, it would seem. Other players have definitely performed better than him from a creative standpoint. I think we'll see it more with chances created, potentially. Although that's actually not important. It's key passes for me. So, Krogan, 1.58 compared to Illich's... I mean, that's, like, 50% better. Like, what I would say as well, though, is look how good Kang's been. I think they've changed some of the definitions of some of these things now. And it feels like what's often happening with our deep line playmaker is that the pass he makes isn't directly leading to a shot. It seems like the, he's providing what, you know, hockey passes, or I guess hockey key passes in this case. That must be what it is. I think it's because of our style of play that re very rarely is he the one that's playing that final ball. But then uh, what I would say to that is that Kroken is providing assists to go with it. And wow. Not a single successful dribble, though, for Morgan Kroken. Uh, Illich hasn't done well of that either. But that's probably because I was asking him to dribble way too much when he was in the team. Uh, so there's that. What about this, then? So Valish is nice and high. Colombo, Illich, Kroken. I mean, they're all about the same on, as far as us scoring goals. But it's cool to see Conroy be a little bit higher, albeit over a small sample size. And he's not bad defensively, either. He sort of interceptions is a bit low. What about PPG? Cro Con Con Conroy well out front. Illich... He's actually considerably better than Morton Crokin. Like, considerably better. Which is fascinating to me. What about their actual scoring record? So he has scored a couple of goals. And, yeah, he's overperforming a bit more than Morton Crokin is, I suppose. Though Crokin hits the target more. Uh, since we're already here... No, actually, what I will do is... I mean, who are we really comparing? Colombo's basically been the only player... I want to compare Colombo and Kirosh, actually. Uh, I'm not sure what to compare them on, but it's kind of curious to me. They should be, like... Kiros again, outperforms Colombo on that one. Uh, we can see about the same with them in the team, although Colombo is better in the air. Kiros has provided a couple of assists so far, though, and his cross completion is very, very high. Key passes is slightly better, too. I suppose that's because he can play both roles, and he is more of a playmaker than Colombo is. He's more of a winger turned central midfielder, whereas Kiros is just midfielder. That's his job. Uh, dribbling is about the same. We do score less with him in the team, though. The PPG is very much a lot lower, and he's not had a single shot in the team, which is fascinating, actually considering that's what the Met Salah is supposed to do. Interesting, uh, is all I can say there. We've got a lot of options in this role, with Illich and Conroy and Kroken and Kirosh and Colombo and Valles. There's there's definitely options in this part of the pitch. So were I to find someone who's amazing, I'll probably try and pick them up, but it's certainly not top of my priority list right now because we do have a lot of young talent with like high potential as well in this position, and they're all very young. There's nobody here that's like under like Porteous and Booty aside here, that's 20, they're all 21 and under. That, that's And they've been playing regularly in the Premier League. So, I mean, Colombo's only 21. O's only 21 as well. Uh, Illich is only 20. Kang's only 20. Kirosh is only 18. As for attacking mids, it's really a case of Kang versus O. Nobody else has really played in that central part. So this is kind of curious. Kang, more interceptions per 90 minutes, but his tackling's way worse in terms of percentages. But tackles one, it's around about the same. We concede way less with him in that role though. And he's better in the air. He assists more. His cross completion is better. Uh, his key passes is through the roof compared to O. Uh, dribbles more. His assists are phenomenally better. Uh, double, in fact, basically. Uh, we score more with him with the team. Our PPG is higher. His XG is tremendous. He hits the target a lot. I mean, it's a hands-down situation. Kang is phenomenal in that role. Honestly, one more season on loan. I'm curious to see whether we can maybe sign him permanently off PSG. Now, it may take a lot of money, but it depends on how much left is on his contract at PSG. This is the key thing, because I really do like this guy. How much are we talking? So, by the end of next summer, we'll, uh, he'll have one year left on his deal. There's no extension clause. Part of me feels like he might be worth, at that point, trying to just take a bid on him, even if it costs us a lot of money, because we know that he's good for what we want to do. And this season, he has been stupidly good. Uh, to contribute to 21 goals this season, he's been the standout player of this season. For me, comfortably, our best player. And he has really rocked that boat. Nearly getting the double figures in both goals and assists from that role. Particularly the assist side of things. Now, I guess that's because he's taken some set pieces as well. But nevertheless, he's definitely provided a decent amount of open play assists too. And I'm ecstatic with his performance. He's really carried us in places. And he still looks very, very good with the slight changes I've made as well. So I'm happy with that. 
as for the right hand side i mean it's so hard it's basically Ivanov and christensen we're comparing and this will be a an interesting one to go with as well so more interceptions for Ivanov. tackles one slightly higher but less actual tackles one in general better defensively with him in the team fascinating worse than the air no surprises there uh more assists though and his cross completion is actually very very good compared to christensen uh but that does actually make sense when you look at his crossing being 12 and christensen's is what 10 i think it's 11 it's gone up by one so it's not that much uh worse than i thought uh key passes though christensen's pretty solid on that one dribbles is obviously worse uh despite having extremely good dribbling he lacks that pace to go with it kind of thing um team goals but it's about about the same we do win more games with the Ivanov in the team though and he does create a more then again that's hard to read i mean that's basically bang on to be fair but Ivanov has played through the middle a few times um in fact you can see here 13 times in fact though he's provided arguably he's played better off the right Although he's been kind of even across the whole board here, really. But, and he does play as a striker, obviously, for his national team. Just the one goal, uh, one assist in six international games for him. Hmm. Interesting. Like, we've got two excellent players in that role. Ivanov can play on both. Like, he can play out right wing, he can play through the middle. I like having that um, versatility there. And also, the fact that Colombo can play out on the right-hand side as well. That extra versatility is very, very useful for us as well. It's, it's a really difficult situation to not do about it, really. Um, I like them. They're young. They've got plenty of potential to go. I don't know. I think it's one of these situations where I'm, I would be totally happy to start next season with both of these two as our right wing option slash striker option. But if I was to find someone else, I wouldn't be opposed to it either. It's just a question of balance and doing what we can with the money that we get because we don't know how much there's going to be yet. And lastly, we're on to strikers. And this is an interesting test. But again, even if we'll struggle on this one just because, again, he's played so few minutes at striker compared to Kim. So it's going to be a bit skewed. Uh, he wins more tackles, of course, playing out wide. Kim has just had a good season for us, though. Like, he's still scored more goals than his XG. He's hitting the target a nice amount. He's still developing nicely as a striker. I have no reason to believe that he won't be our striker next year. There's 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 attention for him from Everton and Spurs. Spurs, there's no way he leaves to go to Spurs. They are struggling in the league. They're not in Europe. The, I just don't see that happening. Everton are only in the Europa League, and I don't think they can afford him quite simply i just really don't think they can afford him. in fact he's no is he even wanted anymore yes he is okay is it still the same teams and wolves wolves for crying out loud newly promoted wolves are interested in him like for me they can all get wrecked because there's no way like bigger club maybe but surely he's not going to leave for any of these three not from i mean logic would say that that's probably unlikely but you just never know with fm what team what players consider bigger clubs so we'll have to sort of see on that one i still think he's been very very good for us so far and i think for me his form over these last few matches has certainly not been bad at all. Two goals against Liverpool. Okay, struggled again a, a bit against Man City and Tottenham, but still actually played okay in the Man City game. Then a goal against Brighton, goal against Chelsea. Didn't play poorly against Norwich either. Uh, we really just missed him through this entire period uh, here, where he was just complete. It was an injury as well. But all the way back further, which we can't actually see, unfortunately, he was just he was so important during that period. So I still happy to start with Kim as our striker next year. He's just getting better and better. Look at some of these attributes. If he was just that tiny bit quicker, even though I have, had him in, have got him working on his quickness, he could be outrageously good. I mean, he still already is. That composure is so useful from time to time, although he does still miss uh, sitters occasionally. I love him a lot, and I think that there's no reason why he won't be the striker for long term in this save. I could see him going all the way with us, if I'm honest. He's that good. Anyway, uh, we've reached a bit of an early conclusion here, but uh, there wasn't as much to talk about as I thought there would be because I'm still a little bit unsure as to what to do at this point. I want to persist with the current shape because I think those changes we've made genuinely have made us more consistent. Now, if we get to 10 games into the next year and it's suddenly looking all inconsistent and rubbish again, then we may have to start taking a little bit of a closer look at it. But for the moment, I'm actually still quite happy with that considering where I was last week, pulling my hair off, just taking the, the weekend off and getting a bit of a chance to reassess and step back for a bit has definitely made me reconsider things. We've stepped in the right direction, 13 points higher this season. I think next year with the right signings and if we can maintain a bit more consistency, I don't see any reason why we can't start pushing for a Europa League place, quite frankly. Or, or maybe even the Europa Conference League were the uh, cup winners to drop slightly differently next year. I think there's definitely a, an opportunity for us to get and be in the battle for Europe next year. Uh, I mean, it depends on how other teams perform, of course. Arsenal and Spurs might get their act together. You just don't know. So, word of the day. What are we going to go for? The word of the day is Costa, because I have a Costa coffee mug, a Costa coffee mug, mug, coffee cup on my desk right now, and that's going to be the word. Uh, let me guess, it'll all be about how much uh, Manny Farmer Costa. Well, I, I agree with you on that one, quite frankly. So, if you've enjoyed this, drop a like, that'd be tremendous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I stream on Twitch, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, you know the rules. And I will see you guys tomorrow for some transfer goodness. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun, Capybara. Bye-bye. <laughs>